I don't know what percentage of science fiction published in the 20th century was written by men, but I'd be willing to bet it was well over 95%. I've been busy scouring the science fiction archives and we're going to look at 10 iconic female science fiction writers now that you might know or that might be undiscovered gems for you whose work you can get stuck into. Pat Cadigan was born in the 1950s in New York State and emigrated to the UK upon marrying her third husband in the mid-1990s. Pat Cadigan is best known for cyberpunk, where her first novel, Mind Players, published in 1980, didn't involve much electronics, but did involve a blurring of the lines between real and perceived, making the human mind an explorable place. This is a theme that she returned to many times. Perhaps her best known work is Sinners, which put her firmly on the cyberpunk map. We have a dark future world, blurred lines between reality and online worlds, hacking, street punks, corporate greed, drugs and weird trips. Via sockets, users can experience entertainment directly into their neural interface, mainly rock music it seems. Cadigan foresaw an internet of sorts in the form of data lines. It's not bad for 1991. There's a corporate takeover and dangers to users in the form of socket-induced strokes which can also affect the network. Cadigan is one of the very few female authors in the cyberpunk world and is well worth a read, I gather. I have Sinners on my shelves and I'll definitely be picking it up soon. Cadigan is also a prolific short story writer and there are a number of collections in her name. Catherine Lucille Moore, better known as C.L. Moore, was a pioneering American science fiction and fantasy writer born in 1911. Her career flourished during the early to mid 20th century's golden age of science fiction. Moore is celebrated for her contributions to the pulp magazine era, notably for creating iconic characters like Northwest Smith and Durell of Joyry, blending science fiction with fantasy elements. Her work, often co-written with her husband Henry Cutner, displayed a rare versatility ranging from space adventures to supernatural tales. Moore's imaginative storytelling and strong and complex characters left an indelible mark, influencing subsequent generations of speculative fiction writers. She also wrote plenty of short stories, many of which are collected in book form, the most notable of which is probably Chamblot and other stories. In Chamblot, a Martian tale, tough smuggler Northwest Smith intervenes to protect a young woman named Chamblot from a pursuing mob, unaware of her non-human nature. Sensing an unusual disgust from the crowd, Smith takes her under his wing. As he conducts his illicit business, Smith discovers that Chamblot sustains herself by draining the life force of others through worm-like appendages, inducing ecstasy in her victim. Fortunately, Smith's Venusian partner, Yarol, rescues him in the nick of time, recognising the danger. Yarol, resisting the creature's allure, uses a mirror to defeat Chamblot. Sexy. Joanna Russ was a feminist writer who chose science fiction and fantasy to express her ideas. Writing mainly in the 60s and 70s, she was the author of several award-nominated and award-winning books and short stories, in an era where nearly all science fiction writers were men. Russ also more or less invented feminist analysis of science fiction as a scholarly area of research. She was outspoken and often angry in her criticism of the mostly male-authored science fiction of the day. Perhaps her best-known work is The Female Man from 1975, a groundbreaking feminist science fiction novel that explores the lives of four women from parallel worlds. The story follows Joanna, a Janine, a Janet and a Jail as they navigate their respective universes, each shaped by unique societal, cultural and historical contexts. Joanna, the protagonist, hails from a world where women and men live in starkly segregated societies, highlighting the extremes of gender-based divisions. Janine inhabits a world reminiscent of the 1930s where traditional gender roles confine her aspirations, whereas Janet resides in a contemporary world where feminism has made significant strides, offering a glimpse into the possibilities of a more equitable society. And finally, Jail represents a war-torn world and embodies aggression and the chaos of unchecked patriarchy. As the women's paths intersect during the story, Russ skillfully contrasts their experiences, challenging conventional notions of gender and societal expectations, exploring issues of identity and autonomy. Russ employs a metafictional approach, incorporating elements of science fiction, but also commentary on the genre itself. The Female Man remains a seminal work in feminist literature, known for its experimental narrative, thought-provoking themes and its critique of gender norms in the patriarchy. Before her writing career took off, Elizabeth Moon served in the US Marine Corps, lending a sense of realism to her often military-themed books. In The Serrano Legacy, she wrote a military space opera consisting of a trilogy and two spin-off pairs. The story spans multiple generations and follows the remarkable military career of Harris Serrano. 
Beginning with 1993's hunting party, Harris, a disgraced fleet officer, finds a new purpose as a private yacht captain for a wealthy aristocrat, Lady Cecilia. The story unfolds against the backdrop of political intrigue, societal hierarchy and familial dynamics within the galaxy's ruling aristocracy. As the series progresses through the following books, Sporting Chance and Winning Colours, Harris becomes entangled in high-stakes space battles, uncovering conspiracies and facing challenges that test her courage and her loyalty. The intricate world-building and detailed character development enrich the story and ex explore themes of honour, duty and class distinctions in a futuristic society. The saga expands further with subsequent instalments like Once a Hero and Rules of Engagement, where Harris continues to experience military life and political machinations. And the series explores the impact of war on individuals, the evolving relationships among the characters, and the consequences of power struggles in a galaxy teetering on the brink of conflict. It's complex, richly described, compelling and immersive, a space opera that will resonate with fans of military science fiction. As an aside, I read one of her books last year, Remnant Population, which was one of my favourite 10 reads of the year. Uh, it's a really good story. Who are your favourite female science fiction authors? Do you like the sound of any of these books? Let me know down below. I'd love to know what you think. On we go then. Joan D. Vinge, briefly married to Verna Vinge, wrote award-winning books, novellas and short stories, as well as many TV and movie novelizations, including A Mad Max, Willow and Cowboys and Aliens, which, if I remember rightly, was a truly awful movie. She is perhaps best known for her Hugo-winning novel, Snow Queen, which unfolds in the distant future within the remnants of a galactic empire, now consolidated into the hegemony, a group of just seven planets. Life on Tiamat, an oceanic world accessible only through wormhole travel, revolves around the ritualistic change which occurs every 150 years, transitioning between winter and summer rule under a Snow Queen or a Summer Queen. The planet's inhabitants split into winter and summer clans that adhere to matriarchal societies with distinct beliefs. Arianrod, the current Snow Queen, secretly implants clones of herself in summer women to extend her reign. Moon, dawn treader summer, surviving to adolescence, becomes entwined in a forbidden romance with her cousin Sparks. The story weaves through political intrigue, off-world exploits and a hegemony exploiting Tiamat's resources. As Moon's journey unfolds, she discovers the truth about Sybils, powerful individuals feared on Tiamat but revered in the hegemony. The plot intensifies with Sparks' peril, Moon's illegal return to Tiamat, and Arianrod's desperate attempts to maintain control. Arianrod's plans for a devastating plague are thwarted, leading to opportunities for Moon. The story concludes with Moon preparing Tiamat to confront the hegemony on equal terms when interstellar travel reopens. Joan Vinge intricately explores themes of power, rebellion, propaganda and manipulation against the backdrop of a richly imagined and technologically diverse universe. Naomi Mitchison was a prolific Scottish author of over 90 books covering travel, historical fiction, fantasy and some science fiction. Via her husband's life period, she was also Baroness Mitchison but never used the title and was later awarded the CBE, which in the UK is a public service medal. Her best known science fiction work is Memoirs of a Space Woman, a groundbreaking work that's told through the memoir of Mary, a communication specialist embarking on an interstellar exploration. Set in a future where humanity spans galaxies, the story explores communication with different alien life forms, the intricacies of space travel and the psychological impacts of venturing into the unknown. Mary's journey is marked by encounters with many forms of life and ethical dilemmas surrounding their treatment. Memoirs of a Space Woman challenges conventional notions of gender, sexuality and parenthood, portraying a society where leadership transcends gender norms and sexuality is approached with openness and understanding. As Mary navigates the complexities of her mission, she grapples with questions of empathy, ethics and the responsibility of exploration. Through its vivid depiction of alien worlds and thought-provoking exploration of social and ethical issues, Memoirs of a Space Woman offers us a compelling vision of humanity's future among the stars. Nancy Cress, born in 1948, is a highly acclaimed American science fiction author with a prolific and distinguished career. Known for her thought-provoking exploration of genetic engineering, sociological themes, artificial intelligence and the human condition, Cress has crafted numerous novels and short stories that have left a lasting impact on the genre. Cress has consistently demonstrated her ability to merge scientific speculation with deeply human stories, earning her recognition as a master of hard science fiction. With her insightful and imaginative storytelling, Nancy Cress continues to be a respected figure in the world of science fiction. Beggars in Spain won the Hugo and the Nebula initially as a novel in 1991 and then was nominated for both awards as an expanded novel a couple of years later. Beggars in Spain is set in a future shaped by genetic engineering. 
When the advent of the sleepless, individuals designed to function without sleep, it feels like me, but without the benefits, challenges the functioning of society. In a world powered by cold fusion, the sleepless exhibit superior intelligence and productivity compared to regular humans, leading to a divide between the genetically modified and the unmodified. Beggars in Spain explores philosophical questions surrounding equality, excellence and our obligations to society as individuals. The story follows Laisha Camden, one of the sleepless, as she deals with the consequences of genetic modifications. The title, Beggars in Spain, reflects the moral dilemma posed by Tony Indovino, questioning what the productive owe to the unproductive masses, the beggars in Spain. As tensions rise between the sleepless and the sleepers, ordinary people, the story explores prejudice, discrimination and the complex relationships within this genetically divided society. The plot unfolds across several sections and several generations, exploring themes of loyalty, betrayal and ethical implications of genetic advancement. With society stratifying even further, we're introduced to new characters like Miranda, a super bright, and Drew Arlen, a liver, one of the 80% of the population who are undereducated but well-fed, enjoying a life of leisure, adding more layers to the exploration of this genetic diversity and its impact on society. Beggars of Spain reflects on conflicting ideologies, drawing inspiration from Ayn Rand's individualism and Ursula K. Le Guin's more communal visions. Connie Willis has won more Hugo, Nebula and other major awards than any other writer and was inducted into the Science Fiction Hall of Fame in 2009. She has some serious science fiction chops. 2001's Passage explores the mysteries of near-death experiences, or NDEs, through the perspective of Joanna Lander, a research psychologist. Lander collaborates with Dr. Richard Wright to unravel the phenomenon of NDEs, aiming to understand the experiences of people that have who have clinically died but have been revived. The story weaves humour and thematic connections to foreshadow events, all while exploring the biological purpose of NDEs. As Lander gets deeper into her research, she faces challenges from Dr. Morris Mandrake, a fraudulent researcher who distorts patients' experiences for his personal gain. Amid struggles to find reliable subjects, Landa herself undergoes an artificial NDE, leading her to a dreamlike version of the Titanic. The novel interlaces various historical disasters and philosophical discussions, offering insights into death, mourning, and the quest for understanding the dying process. The story unfolds with intricate layers, including the exploration of Landa's personal connection to death and mourning, inspired by the author's own experiences. And as the characters grapple with ethical dilemmas and unravel the secrets of near-death experience, Passage combines elements of science fiction, psychology and historical events to create a compelling exploration of life, death and the human psyche. I'd also like to give a shout out to Connie Willis's Blackout and All Clear books from 2009, which I read last year and absolutely loved. The pair is really one giant book split into two and also forms part of a loosely related series. Set in a Britain fighting alone in the early years of the Second World War, it follows a handful of time-travelling historians from the 2060s who are sent back to observe events. And boy, does this story pack an emotional punch. And by the end, I was in pieces, sobbing my little heart out. It's really great, and was one of my uh, top few books of last year. Mary Shelley might have some claim to be the great-great-grandmother or something of science fiction, Writing in the first half of the 19th century, she's chiefly known for Frankenstein, but also wrote a post-apocalyptic dystopian novel, The Last Man, arguably the first book of its kind. Critically panned on publication, but reappraised in the late 20th century, The Last Man is set in the, in the late 21st century. It depicts a world devastated by a global pandemic, sound familiar? With the bubonic plague leading to the near extinction of humanity. Shelley explores political ideologies of the Romantic era, incorporating elements of her personal experiences and relationships, including references to her husband, Percy Shelley, and her friend, Lord Byron. The protagonist, Lionel Verney, is an orphan who undergoes a transformative journey from lawlessness to civilization under the influence of his friend, Adrian, the Earl of Windsor, who is also the son of the last King of England. The Last Man introduces a cast of characters representing figures from Shelley's life, and their stories intertwine with themes of love, ambition, and familial bonds. As the pandemic spreads and escalated, the story unfolds across Europe, depicting the failure of the romantic political ideals and the erosion of trust in the face of crisis. Shelley weaves her own biographical elements into the characters, providing a poignant exploration of loss, isolation and the tragic consequences of human nature. Joe Clayton was a prolific author of science fiction and science fantasy novels and short stories. 
She lived an interesting life, spending a few years in a convent following a religious experience, but leaving before taking her final vows that would have made her a full-on nun. Clayton's Skeen Trilogy is a compelling science fiction series that blends elements of space opera and adventure. The trilogy comprises three novels, Skeen's Leap, Skeen's Search and Skeen's Return, all from the mid-1980s. The story revolves around the enigmatic character Skeen, a combination of Indiana Jones and a space pirate. She's a skilled and roguelike interstellar thief with a mysterious past. Stranded on a planet by her second-in-command, the trilogy begins with Skeen's unexpected leap into a portal that transports her to another alien world. Faced with an unfamiliar environment and strange inhabitants, Skeen has to deal with political intrigue, ancient mysteries and her own forgotten history. As the story unfolds, Skeen becomes entangled in a quest to uncover her own true identity and unravel the secrets of her origin. And along the way, she forms alliances, faces formidable adversaries and confronts the challenges of her own transformation. Clayton skillfully crafts a universe filled with diverse cultures, advanced tech and a rich tapestry of characters. The Skeen trilogy is renowned for its strong and complex protagonist, intricate world building and the exploration of themes such as identity, redemption and the consequences of one's actions. Joe Clayton's masterful storytelling and the vividly imagined universe make this trilogy a standout contribution to the science fiction genre, offering us an engaging and thought-provoking journey through Skeen's adventures in the cosmos. I've heard Joe Clayton described as 30 years ahead of her time and compared favourably to Anne Leckie, so if you enjoyed the ancillary justice books, you might enjoy Skeen too. If you'd like to hear about more top-notch female science fiction writers, you can watch the video I did a few months back, which covers greats such as James Tiptree Jr, Andre Norton and Ursula Le Guin. As always, thank you for watching and until next time, bye for now. <laughs>